Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Paul Apps and this is my wildlife art channel. Now today I'm going to continue the second part of that hyena painting for you. It covers the last three to four hours of the painting, all condensed down nicely for you into about 15-16 minutes of video. So I hope you enjoy it and I'm sure you get something from it. So let's roll that intro and let's see how it ended. Okay, so moving swiftly on, I've done a lot of work in this area, but I would like to look at this area here, which I feel I have rather neglected. Now, partly because there is a lot of information I'm struggling to understand. And there's always parts of paintings, photos, reference, that you've got to try and work out from the anatomy what there is to be seen here. Now the tail's coming down, almost touching the water, and I haven't allowed for that in the drawing, so I've got to correct that right now. This little segment really dealt with the fact that I couldn't fully understand the anatomy at this point. The photograph wasn't that good, and a lot of the areas that should have been more identifiable were lost in the dark passages. So I had to sort of consider what was and what should be, and then to lift the light in places where I felt that I needed to do a little bit more work. And then it was a case of coming across and adding a few more marks, spots, identifying features that separated this animal from virtually any other animal. They've got these lovely sets of markings that are almost stripes at one point and spots in others. And all I'm really doing is placing those and adding some lights around them to take me forwards. Okay, now much of what I'm doing in this oil will work easily in acrylics too. So, you know, acrylic painters will get benefit from something like this as well because, you know, you can work both of them. Now, I'm just going to check there. There's a big old spot there, but the cooler colours and warmer colours combined. Okay, so... I'm just going to come in here then with some extra slightly longer marks suggesting that the fur is just reaching over some of these darks a little bit more. Okay, so as I was doing just now, I'm just further adding little marks of lights and darks just to put those little spots in places and coming down into the uh, lower areas around the tummy and the abdomen I actually shortened this because the original subject is heavily pregnant and I didn't want that in my painting okay so I think I'm going to now move this board down so I can easily work on this other animal okay so now I'm turning my attention to the second of the two hyena well, I've got to say this, that it seems that I've been painting the both of them for such a long time. I keep revisiting the same areas again and again. And you may feel that it's quite repetitive in a way that it is, because all I'm doing is waiting for layers to dry, revisiting and seeing where I need to add more detail, more highlights, more low lights to strengthen the contrast, to bring the whole of this painting to a full conclusion and here I'm simply going back into this one and adding some lighter marks around the muzzle around the hair just to bring it up a stage further it was looking a little flat and I decided that it needed that much more work to bring it up to a level that I will be happy with and moving on with and I will do that until the end of the painting or when I think the end is done now i've got that a little bit too shortened there they sort of point down into the walls of water going down the side of the animal round towards its tummy but uh, of course that's all gone because it's submerged but i'm just trying to set this up in terms of the color for later i'm coming i want a bit more orange a bit more red to that i'll make some of these a little less cool heat them up a little bit more as it were 
And let me come in here and put a little tap of orangey red into some of them. Give them some nice warm values. Now, I need to put in a lighter, paler color, I think. Not necessarily pure white, but one that's got a little bit of yellow oxide in. And I'm going to make that quite pale. I'm going to see how this goes, see what it looks like. There's an awful lot of white. I quite like that. Hey, continuing on and adding to the thoughts that I had just now with relation to increasing the contrast, I decided to come in with an even stronger light white color. It isn't white. It's very much an oatmeal. I never put an exact white on or a pure white in any highlight. I always tint it somehow. This has got quite an apricot or peachy tint to the white, but it really does bring up some of the light factors and details in the coat of the animal also around the ears and the head and starting to look at the areas on the other animal as well just looking at both of them at the same time judging one against the other to see where i might need to add more values in terms of contrast values light to dark before we carry on to the next area and just very subtly coming down the side so it looks more three-dimensional it can't be seen i can't see it so much in the photograph it is there it's got to be there it's just that the photograph is probably not allowing me to see all the information i'd like all right a number zero flat i'm using a lot of pale white colors i'm going to use a bit of the um green color with some of the king's blue light delicious combination so we've got the lovely cobalt teal and we've coupled that up with the cooler king's blue so between them they will come up with quite an exciting sort of watery green color test your color see how they are pretty dark so we can actually come up a little bit more with some more white into that it was at this stage that I was pretty happy with the animals and felt that they were pretty much complete. So I turned my attention now to the water, developing that further, and also the ground immediately behind the two hyena. But as I said just now, I really am pleased with the way the two animals are looking. With a few extra taps here and there towards the end, this is all I'm going to be doing to them. I do need though to sort of excite the water, bring it up to a completed level before we finish. All right, so I think that's good. So I'm gonna leave that part there, but I still need to finish off and put a little bit more information into some of this. And I'm also going to be putting in a lot more uh, warm colors that are also being directly reflected in the water from the bank above or behind it sorry everything that i do from here on in is being done with a small rigger brush and it is quite literally the i's and the t's i always say that but i have been looking at the whole painting constantly making little judgments moving forward slowly but adding the final little bits of detail the little pricks of light that are on the edges of the water the little bits of debris that the animals are brought down on their legs or however it all appears but these are the fine details that complete the work these little pricks of light right on the edge of the water catching the sun they really are special and they bring those final ingredients needed hi everyone and a warm welcome back now it's been a week since i last had a look at this and played around with it and hopefully I'm going to get the whole thing finished in this last session. So wish me luck, let's see how we get on. And first and foremost, I think I'm gonna be working on this water. Now I've got to look at some of the values and tones in here, some of the darks and some of the um, sort of warmer colors in here, as well as uh, dark passages in here and getting some more information in the ripples on the water itself. So let's get on. All right, so I'm going to be using a lot of um, burnt, uh, not burnt, well, burnt sienna or oxide of red, depending on which one you have on your palette. They are very, very similar colors. 
and I'm gonna put a little bit of umber and a little bit of ultramarine blue so that I can come in here and get some quite exquisite little darts going. I'm gonna put a little bit on the chest of this animal. You can see how the glossy paint sort of really shows up against the mat where it's dried. Although the commentary that I gave you just now was just a few moments in passing, it has been an actual week between the two sessions. And this, I felt, was the very last session that I was going to be doing on this piece. But having put all those very, very fine details in the I's and the T's, as I called it, I wanted to add more drama. There wasn't quite enough contrast going on in the water and between the shadowy parts of the animals. I'd really taken care of the highlights during the course of the final parts of this painting, but I really had neglected the darker lowlights, those extra little punches of dark color, stronger in chroma, that would actually make the difference and really throw the animals out and at the same time add the degrees of warm and cool contrast that I need as well as the light and dark contrast. But now I'm going back to those final little bits of adding and tapping in the bits of information, some that I'd lost during the course of this little process. But I think I'm really pleased with the outcome and the way this is ending up and I'm sure the client will be too. Lots of little transitions. And this is the thing about moving water, that you know you have so many subtle transitions of color that you can put a tap somewhere, it does seem to work. And on another tap, it doesn't seem to work. And you are yin-yanging, as it were. You push-pull your colors, your values, all over the place during the course of this painting. And eventually you say, that's working. That's where I want it to be. And you stick with it. Okay, so we're pretty much now down to the wire and all I'm really doing is mixing up the colors. Looking at all those lovely warm colors, those cool colors, the light versions, the dark versions, mixing up the ripples, changing the way that you see the water. Hopefully I'm suggesting that there's movement in the water and indeed there was the little bits of movement where the animals were walking in, other animals nearby were drinking and disturbing the water. And I'm just trying to emulate the feeling of movement, activity in the water, because the animals themselves are pretty much quite still. They were gazing, looking, onlooking, whether they were sizing up dinner, I have no idea. But they were the static points as well as the background in this painting. I really wanted the water to have movement in it. All I'm doing is finishing off with a few final details that I felt needed adding to the animals. In fairness, there wasn't really much left to do. I had already decided that if I didn't do any more, they were complete. Just want to really excite this area behind the neck here. Mine's gone a little bit pale. I'm gonna put a little bit of orange in there, just under there just to liven up that area. Okay, it's just a few dozen minor brush strokes to make, but they are quite important ones. Just the odd little highlight, just a little tap of color here and there, just to finish this whole painting. I really am pleased with the outcome. Those little tweaks of light around the legs there just bring it to a conclusion. Odd splash of glistening water, all it needs. I've enjoyed this one. And my signature is not in a strong red or a strong blue or black. It is merely there, can be seen, but not overpowering. And that's my belief. It's different for individual artists. You don't have to uh, adhere to that. You can simply put in what you want. But I quite like the idea that my... Um, paintings don't have my signature in neon lights in one area <laughs> it's just down out the way and it's there at least people then can look at it and say lovely picture oh it was painted by him and that's great that's all you need it to do just identify the artist okay everybody i hope you've enjoyed that i have had a lot of fun painting this one and i know it's been um, a long one for those who are watching it full length but if you're watching this on YouTube in my newly changed channel, should I say it like that, 
I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been heavily cut down. It's had to be. This is painted over probably about eight hours, nine hours of work. So it's taken a little time. So you're seeing a really heavily edited version on my channel right now. But I hope you've enjoyed the process and uh, got something from it to take on with in your own painting. And so if you're not a subscriber and you have enjoyed this, then please subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon and the notification tab. It tells you as and when every time I upload a new video and look forward to your company in the future one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Enjoy your painting. Take care. Bye-bye.